Hey guys, in this video we are going to be looking at SD cards and I got quite a few here that I've owned over the years and I also got a new one here which is a, a Kingston card that's made for recording 4K video. So I'm excited to have this card also, but what we're gonna do today is, is we're going to test these cards and their write speeds and read speeds. I was always curious about my old cards here, and what kind of performance they have, because I have had times where I would record and the camera would shut off because the card is not writing fast enough. So normally it's the write speeds that is the issue. So we'll be looking at that. And also guys, I'm going to be showing you how to do that on a Mac operating system. All right guys, so let's get started. All right guys, so here we are on the desktop here and you can see I have my mouse in there. So the first thing you wanna do is you want to go to your Explorer and you want to go find uh, a website called Xbench. So Xbench is the tool that you'll be using to actually read the card on your computer. So, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna click here on download on the side here. And as you can see, it went to download once you download that, then you can open it, which it'll look something like this. And once you click that, it'll open a file, and you'll just click on this one here. But before you can even run the program, guys, you need to format your card. So install the card into your slot. So before you can even run the card, you have to format it into a format that the, that the Xbench can understand. So you're gonna go to your finder, and then you're going to click on applications then you're going to click on utilities and here you're going to find the disk utility and that's what you need so once you open the disk utility you, we can find this lumix card right here so if you click on that you will see all the attributes of this card the capacity and whatnot else so it has been cleaned out and actually already um, formatted to be in OSX compatible card. So which, how you're gonna do it is you're gonna click on erase, and then right here under this, you're gonna click on extended journal, and that's it. And then you're gonna click erase, and it's gonna format the card so you can check it. So this takes a couple seconds here. So it's done, and so this card is ready to check. So once you've done that, just minimize this for now. And open your X bench. So one of the things that I forgot to mention is that you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to go into your privacy settings, which is in system preferences, which is right here. And you're gonna have to uh, unlock this and allow any apps to be used on your thing because this thing is not certified by Apple, so it's not they don't want you to use it. So you don't forget. Uh, so this is one of the things you're gonna have to do before you can even use it set the security settings to anywhere. All right, so once you open it up, you're gonna click open here, and this is what you'll get. So here is gonna ask you to check all these things, so all we wanna do is check a disk test. Just like this, disk test, and we're gonna choose the Lumix card. So once you format it, it's gonna read it automatically. And so now, we can start our test. So we're gonna go ahead and start with this blue SD card that I got here. And let's see what kind of results we get. So it's doing a test right now. It's running it. All right, so the total score that we got for this card is a 40.19. So it's not a bad card. So if we look right here, um, here are the speeds right here. This is the scores here. So don't mind these numbers too much. These are just scores. Here are the actual speeds on this side right here. So I think we're looking at this 256 blocks is the more realistic numbers here. So the write speed is 17 megabits per second. That's pretty slow, but reasonable. 
and this is the read speed which is 72 megabits per second so, so not a bad card so let's move to our next one so what you're going to want to do is you want to eject this card don't save so you're going to have to probably restart this i'm not sure so let me go ahead and try to stick another card the next our next card in which is basically a scan disk extreme sdhc1 but it is rated with the three so it has at least 30 megabytes of write speed so let's see if that is the case because this first card was actually a class 10 card all right guys so i stuck in a new card and it also came up as lumix as you can see i use my panasonic camera a lot for these so we're going to have to go in our disk utility and find this card and as we can see on this card we have some information on it which we don't need so we're going to click erase up here and then we're going to format it as osx and don't worry about this guys because once you put the memory card back into the camera you can format it back to you know where the camera can read it so so we're going to go ahead and format this thing and you guys can see how quick it formats pretty quick so this card is ready for the test now so let's go ahead and start it see what happens all right so it's not starting so i guess you do have to restart the x bench every time because it needs to refresh what it's looking at i guess i'll close that and open it again so it wants me to donate later all right so let's do a test on the scan disk card here all right let's roll all right guys so that looks like the score so we got a much higher score this time and here is the specs so here is the write speed which is not as fast as i thought it was going to be it's actually still slow very weird and the read speed seems kind of slow anyways maybe i don't know what i'm doing guys in any case here's our total score which is 63.91 which is higher than the last one by a lot so that's kind of cool all right guys so let's move to our next card <clears throat> so i'm going to go ahead and close this program eject my card so the next card we're going to be looking at is a pny elite performance so this is a hd video card so this should be really good so let's check out how it does so this one's registering as a canon no big deal we'll click on it and format it all right so we're going to open our program again so you have to keep opening and closing all this stuff but that's okay and let's start it all right guys so this card should do better i would think but i don't know we'll see maybe not because the last one was a scan disk and this is a pny it is a higher rated card i think well actually maybe they're the same rated all right looks like we're not getting very good scores here actually this card has stopped on me multiple times when i'm recording well actually no that's not this card this card i think only stopped on me once before wow getting a super low score that is so weird i think i paid pretty good money for this one too all right guys so here is the results and they are awful i don't understand why they are awful so the read speed is only 67 and it's rated at 95 and the write speed is only at 10 which is awful very weird i'm actually very surprised that this card did this terrible i almost want to run it again to see if this it'll do close to what it did so 19.65 let's go ahead and run it again and see what happens all right guys so i even got a lower score than last time so yeah it's a pretty weak card and 
the write and read speeds are about the same as last time. So um, it's definitely terrible at the random here too. So I don't know what's going on, but it's it's a terrible write speed card. So I, now I'm going to know that this card is not very trustworthy. That, that was, this is very surprising for me. I did not expect such a low rating for this card. All right, guys, let's go to our next card. All right, guys, so our next card is a Lexar Professional, which is the same rating as our last card. Also 95 megabytes per second. It's a 633 times. Also 64 gig, just the last one. I didn't mention the other ones, but... Anyways, let's see how it does compare to our last one. The last one was a big surprise for me, you guys. All right, so this one is a Lumix also. So let's go to our disk utility and erase this one. So as you can tell, this one is slap full. We're going to go ahead and format it. All right, guys, I'm very curious how this one is going to do because this one actually turned off at me a few times here and there when I start recording 100 megabytes per second on the Panasonic G85. Sometimes this card cuts off at me. Not always, but randomly sometimes it will. So let's see how it does. I'm very curious, actually. So here we go. Okay, so it's doing reasonable, seems like so far definitely doing better than my elite performance PNY about the same read speed also so there it goes it's finished and we got a score of 38.67 so a reasonable score not as good as I thought it was gonna be the write speed is still kind of slow surprisingly say it does but Anyways, maybe that has something to do with the program. But in any case, guys, as you can see, it didn't do as well as I thought it would. But it definitely did much better than my PNY card, which is really weird. All right, guys, so let's go to the next card. So let's go to our ScanDisk card, which is also a micro USB HC1, and it's a 10. So we'll see how this one does. All right, let's go. All right, so do you have a pretty low write speed here? But that's except that's kind of expectable on a you know a micro SD card. Oh, well, this one's taking a little long to uh, process here. So either it got stuck or it's still doing something. It says it's running. There's a little tab right here. Please wait. So it's still running, I think. It's just not. Oh, there it goes. Wow, that took forever. Well, I guess that makes sense because it's a low score. Wow, that's terrible. So yeah, technically it's not far off my good card, better cards, but yeah, it's a pretty low, low rating. And here are the sequential speeds here. So 42. Pretty reasonable for a tiny car, but this speed here is pretty slow. Anyways, guys, so I'm definitely surprised so far of what's been happening to the cards here. Mostly I've been surprised about my higher end cards that I thought were higher end, but they don't actually perform as good as I thought they were performing. So, all right, guys, so I left the best for last, which is a Kingston card. And I'm really wondering how good this card will do because, you know, this is supposed to be a super super 4k card that is made for video so, so i haven't even opened this thing so let's crack it open and here it is guys so we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing we did so it popped up as untitled so let's open our disk utility and format this guy so yeah it's a 128 guys and we're going to format it into an OX, OSX. All right, let's go. 
All right, guys, so I got my fingers crossed for this one, and I'm hoping that, you know, it'll do good because I paid good money for these guys. Of course, it's a definitely a reasonable cost card, but it is supposed to be very good. They're highly rated also. And anything that comes out of Kingston seems to be really high quality either way, so. Well, we'll see how it does, so here we go. And here we go, Untitled 1. So let's go, guys. I'm very, very curious of how this is going to turn out. So it's running the test right now. Well, it's actually really good at the random speeds too. Actually, it did quite a bit better. So overall, this thing is much, 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 much better, guys. In any case, guys, I'm not an expert at this thing, but as you can see, our score here has totally demolished all the other cards. So these, this card is definitely, definitely much better. You know, almost double is better than the uh, best card I got right now. So it was definitely worth the money. And the price is practically the same, guys. So if you need a good card, buy the Kingston React. This thing is a very, very good card. This thing is a no-joke good card. So I'm sure you can get much better cards, but you'll have to pay a lot more money. All right, guys, so that'll be it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully you learned something about cards. I definitely realized that my other cards were not as good as I thought they were. Um, I'm definitely excited about the new Kingston cards. I think those will be great for 4K video. Actually, guys, you can use that Xbench program to run like USB sticks and any kind of drives that you can format and then, you know, run it on there. So you can check multiple things. It's not just for SD cards, you know, internal hard drives and whatnot else. So. Anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to get any of these cards, well, I'm not going to leave links for all of them, but I'll definitely leave with a link for the Kingston. And it looks like ScanDisk, you can't go wrong. They, they seem to deliver what they say, which is cool. So I would get only these good brands here. The cheaper ones are okay. So, but go with something that you know is going to be good. So especially for 4K recording, you want to have a good card because you don't want your card to be always slouching and the camera trying to struggle by you know trying to write on there so so yeah guys links are in the description so if you want to see more videos like this and other things i do on this channel and you're not subscribed hit that subscribe button and as always guys thanks for watching and i'll see you on the next one peace